All right, so in this video, I'm going to try and explain to you how the extraocular muscles work, what they're innervated by, and why the concept of why the muscles work in the way that they do is entirely depending on what direction the gaze is pointing in. Okay, let me try and exemplify that for you. First off, please do know that we have seven extraocular muscles. We have a lateral rectus, a medial rectus, superior rectus, down below is an inferior rectus, then we have a superior oblique and an inferior oblique. We also have the levator palpebrae superioris, which is reflected here, that actually elevates the eyelid, doesn't really move the eyeball itself. The mnemonic device for you is LR6 SO4 Three. That means the lateral rectus is innervated by cranial nerve 6, the abducens nerve, which makes sense because this muscle abducts the eye. The superior oblique is innervated by cranial nerve number 4, called the trochlear nerve, because indeed this muscle passes through a little pulley, which is called a trochlea, as the tendon then attaches on the superior aspect of the eyeball. And the three means that all other muscles are innervated by the oculomotor nerve, cranial nerve number three. So only two muscles have their own nerve associated with them, and all the others are innervated by the oculomotor nerve. The different attachment sites of the muscles enable the eyeball to move in many directions, basically around three axes, so into six directions. We will be able to rotate along the anterior-posterior axis. There will be lateral and medial rotation, which are also called extorsion in terms of lateral rotation and intorsion in terms of medial rotation. You can look left and right, which would be a abduction or a deduction, and you can look up or down, which is elevation and depression. Most importantly, to understand why the extraocular muscles act in the way they do is because the optical axis diverges by about 45 degrees from the axis of the orbit. See, the orbits look a little bit like pyramids, and the eyeball is sitting in these pyramids, but when it is pointing forwards, so the gaze is straight forwards, also called the primary position, we actually have a 45 degree angle between the optical axis and the axes of the orbit. Well, this leads to the main problem. Many of the muscles that move the eyeball will be originating from the apex of the pyramid here and then inserting on the eyeball, either superiorly, medially, or laterally, or medially. And if these muscles pull, well now they are not pulling on a ball that is looking forwards, but on a ball that is at an angle to the direction of pull. That means the resulting traction, the resulting movement is going to be different than you might anticipate. First of all, the main problem that I always see people having is to differentiate the movements exerted on the eyeball, which are called anatomical actions, versus clinical testing. These diagrams might look similar when you look at them the first time. However, they show something quite different. The anatomical actions describe the movements of the eyeball starting at the primary position. That means if this is the medial aspect, okay, if you were to have the eyeball looking straight forward in the primary position, you activate the medial rectus, it'll pull medially. That's completely clear. The lateral rectus will pull laterally. All right. The superior oblique, however, will depress and intort and abduct the eye if we are in the primary position. However, if we want to test isolated muscles, what we have to do is we have to first move the eyeball as you can see in these images. So if I want to test the superior rectus or inferior rectus independently, first I have to activate the lateral rectus, so abduct the eyeball, and then you ask the patient to look up or look down. On the other side, if you want to test the inferior oblique and superior oblique, you first ask the patient to look towards the midline, towards the nose, at the fully adducted eyeball, then the inferior oblique will lead to pure elevation and the superior oblique to pure depression. Now that's confusing, isn't it? Well, let's see if 
a few minutes down the road we will be able to understand why this is the way it is. You can always refer back to this diagram here. This shows you all of the muscles and it shows you where they attach and what their names are. The most important thing here is you can see the optical axis versus the axis of the orbit and if I was pulling on this muscle you would see yes it would lead to some elevation however it would also lead to a medial rotation and in torsion. The medial rectus and lateral rectus muscles are the only two extraocular muscles that act in the x-axis. So how will you clinically test these two muscles and their associated cranial nerves? To do that, we take a look at their actions. Well, the lateral rectus abducts the eye, the medial rectus adducts the eye. So to clinically test them, have them look towards their nose or towards the wall. That's simple. Medial rectus will test cranial nerve 3. Lateral rectus will test the abducens nerve, cranial nerve 6. The superior rectus and inferior oblique muscles are the only two extraocular muscles that act in the y-axis to elevate the eye and look up. Therefore, to test the superior rectus muscle, it must be isolated from the inferior oblique and vice versa. How is this done? Well, the superior rectus muscle is shown here in pink, and the inferior oblique is grayed out. In order to isolate the superior rectus from the inferior oblique muscle, the vector pull of the muscles, the solid arrow, must be placed in parallel with the gaze of the orbit, the dotted arrow. And what action would be necessary in order to accomplish this? Correct. You have the patient abduct their eye. Now the vector pull of the superior rectus, solid arrow, is in parallel with the gaze of the orbit, the dotted arrow. And now the patient is instructed to look up. Now what axis would the inferior oblique muscle now act if it contracted with the eye abducted? It's on the z-axis, it torques the eye, and you, that's something that's not easy to see. Now the inferior oblique muscle is highlighted with the superior rectus muscle grayed out. In order to isolate the inferior oblique from the superior rectus muscle, the vector pull of the muscle, that solid arrow, must be placed in parallel with the gaze of the orbit, the dotted arrow. So what action would be necessary in order to accomplish this, correct, they adduct their eye. Now the vector pull of the inferior oblique, the solid arrow, is in parallel with the gaze of the orbit, that dotted arrow. Now the patient is instructed to look up. So what axis would the superior rectus now act with the eye adducted? It's going to act on that z-axis to torque the eye, which is not something easy to see. So in clinically testing, first you have the patient look laterally and then look up. That's how you isolate the superior rectus away from the inferior oblique. And to test the inferior oblique, you have the patient adduct their eye first and then look up. And that's the way you isolate the inferior oblique away from the superior rectus. So the superior oblique and the inferior rectus muscles are the only two extraocular muscles that act in the y-axis to depress the eye and look down. Therefore, to test the superior oblique, it must be isolated from the inferior rectus and vice versa. So how is this done? The superior oblique muscle is highlighted in pink, inferior rectus is highlighted in gray, or just gray, pardon me. What action is necessary in order to put the vector of the superior muscle, superior oblique muscle, that solid arrow, parallel with the gaze of the orbit, that dotted arrow? Correct, you have to adduct the eye. Now look, they're in parallel. So look the inferior rectus muscle on the bottom, and the superior oblique is grayed out. How would you put the gaze of the orbit, that dotted arrow, in parallel with the gaze of the inferior rectus, the solid arrow? Correct. You abduct the eye. Now they're in parallel. Now you have the patient look down. So here we've got the superior oblique and the inferior rectus muscles shown how they're tested. The superior oblique is isolated from the inferior rectus by adducting the eye first. And the inferior rectus is isolated from the superior oblique by abducting the eye first. And this now shows you clinical testing of the eyeball on the right and the anatomical actions on the left. All right, so now let's test your clinical knowledge here. This patient obviously has some kind of abnormality with 
his extraocular muscles. What seems to be the underlying problem? Well, as you can see, this individual is trying to look forward. That works with the right eye, but the left eye does not. You can see the left eye is abducted and also depressed. In addition to that, if you look carefully, you can see that the right pupil is a little constricted. However, the left pupil is lacking that constriction. So that means we seem to have the constrictory pupillae affected, and we have muscles affected that can help oppose the abduction by the lateral rectus and depression by the superior oblique. That only leaves one more nerve in question, the oculomotor nerve. What you're seeing here is a classical oculomotor nerve palsy. Complete oculomotor nerve palsy will affect most of the ocular muscles, the levator palpiprius superioris as well, and the sphincter pupillae. The superior eyelid droops a little bit, and it can't be raised voluntarily because you have unopposed activity from the orbicularis oculi, which is innervated by the facial nerve. The pupil is also dilated, as we can see in the image, and non-reactive because of the unopposed dilated pupillae, which is under sympathetic control. The pupil is fully abducted and depressed, down and out, because we have unopposed activity of the lateral rectus and the superior oblique, respectively. Here is our next clinical correlation. So the first question here would be, do these two individuals suffer from the same or different condition? Here's your quiz. Yes or no? Okay. So in that case, what is the problem here? If we look very carefully, it's not quite as obvious in this person up here, but see, she's trying to look forwards, straight ahead, primary position. And this gentleman is trying to focus his gaze on the cap of this marker here. However, only his right eye is moving. So if we put this together, we see that the medial rectus of the right eye is active. He's looking over here. The lateral rectus of the left eye should be active so that he can look at the pen here, or the marker, does not seem to work. In this lady here, you can see that the pupil, or actually the eyeball, is adducted. Well, that would also match the case as what we're seeing here, because if we lose the lateral rectus, we'll have unopposed actions of the medial rectus, and of course, all the other muscles, that would lead to an adducted eyeball. And that's exactly what we can see in both of these individuals. So in this case, we're talking about abducens nerve palsy. The abducens nerve goes to the lateral rectus because it abducts the eyeball. Next, what is wrong here? This is your classical triad of symptoms. I see a constricted pupil. I see a droopy eyelid. Well, actually the third symptom I do not see. The third symptom would be dryness, so anhydrosis. We see ptosis, meiosis, and anhydrosis. Those are all symptoms of Horner syndrome. Last but not least, I'm going to throw in a table for you. You can pause the video if you want to use that to study. Remember that your sympathetic chain will carry sympathetic fibers all over the body. And if you have something to the 
eyeball, for instance, you would have to have the synapse occur in the superior cervical ganglion. You would have cephalic arterial rami travel with the carotid arteries via a periarterial plexus and then go to the dilator pupillae. This is interrupted. The dilator pupillae doesn't work, cannot dilate the pupil. That means you'd have a constricted pupil. And in addition to that, of course, the other sympathetic functions such as basal constriction and pseudo motion would not work.